Hey y'all, welcome to Sarah's Prismatic Musings. This week I will be discussing the Roswell UFO Festival that happens around the 4th of July every year since 1996. So this year it was on the 5th, 6th, and 7th. Last year in 2023, it was June 30th through July 2nd. So you can check Roswell UFO Festival and there's a website that will come up. I don't know how soon they create the website. I mean, it just happened. So right now there's no information, but the Chamber of Commerce um, has information for previous years. So you can get like the dates of when they were. So I picked up this and this little guy in the um, foyer of the UFO Museum and Research Center. Mainly what we did this year was go and listen to ufologists talks at the North Library at the museum. But they have two different rooms. They have the North Library and then the IUFO MRC video room which we didn't see anyone in there. So this is like an example on Friday at 11 to 12, they had Jerry Croft. I touched the Roswell foil in 1965. It changed how I see the world. 1.30 to 2.30, Keith Sealand, the rocks continue to talk. 3.30 to 4.30, uh, Alejandro Rojas, UFOs and UAP. And then on Saturday, they have some of the same speakers. This is a new one, 1.30 to 2.30, Frank Kimbler, Roswell Mysteries and Discoveries to Blow Your Mind, 330 to 4.30 Famous Politicians and Roswell, that's Don Smith. Now Don Smith is the one of the founders of the UFO Museum in Roswell. The UFO Museum and Research Center opened in 1992 and Don Smith is primarily a uh, college professor. We went and saw Don Smith on Friday from 4 to 5. And then on Saturday, we saw Alejandro Rojas talking about strange alien encounters. And I really enjoyed his discussion because he talked about different UFO encounters that have happened in history. And this one encounter, I don't ask me specifics, I don't remember. But he told us about this one famous encounter where a whole family encountered these aliens that were like short and like gray with long arms that almost touched the ground, and like big ears. And he said that their description of these aliens are what E.T. was based on. So that was cool. And then he also said that they were the basis for the gremlins which who knew, I didn't know that. So Alejandro Rojas is a science fiction writer and he's a really good storyteller. I really liked his presentation. Even though we were sitting on really hard, uncomfortable chairs for an hour, he kept my attention. We then stayed for Yvonne Smith. She talked about the abduction experience, messages from the others. Her presentation was okay. She's a hypnotherapist and she has this group for uh, abductees and she's really pushing her books and then we listen to Ben Hansen UFO disclosure is there a plan and he talked about how with certain life-altering events it brings the community together but he stated how with COVID homicide rates went up and uh, domestic violence went up all these crimes went up and that they're not sure you know if there's disclosure which way it would go. Would it be like other events that happen where it brings people together or would it be like COVID where people become more violent and more antisocial, right? So he discusses that there's really no plan for disclosure. There's no way to really tell. You can find his talk on YouTube. Uh, I think on YouTube, it's two hours long. The talk we listened to was an hour. Now, Friday night, we tried to go see his Skywatch which I thought would have been really fun. However, a freak storm rolled in and there was a big thunderstorm. A 
And so it got canceled. It got put to Saturday night, but we don't want to go Saturday night because Saturday night was the UFO parade. <laughs> we wanted to see it's a little difficult because there's so much going on all the time every day so the ufo museum has the speakers the ufologists and they had like booths the speakers set up with selling their books and you could talk to the people individually i don't honestly know other than ben hansen because i've seen some of his shows it was fun to watch his he showed us like deleted scenes and outtakes, um, but mainly deleted scenes. He flew a plane like super low to see if airplanes could do what these people like claimed. And basically it was like, no. So it was most likely a UAP. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, you hear the clip of his co-pilot who had a lot of hours of flying being like, this is, I'm really scared, like flying this low and this fast. Um, it's just not done. Um, so that was interesting. Don Smith, he, what we listened to him talk, it was really about Project Blue Book. So, it, you know, that's what it should have said here instead of, you know, did Dr. J. Allen Hynek know the truth about UFOs and Roswell? Okay, I guess I should have put two and two together. He was the patsy for Project Blue Book. And Project Blue Book, it took him an hour to condense it, what I'm going to tell you right now is that Project Blue Book was set up to discredit eyewitnesses and anyone who saw anything. Dr. Hynek was there to just say, oh, it was this, it was that, it was a UFO or UAP or aliens. Those talks were okay. So you could go there for entertainment. There's the convention center where they did like a comic con and they also had their own speakers. And then the Roswell Daily Record had a newspaper tour and they were also doing a film festival that was at the convention center. We checked out the convention center on Friday between we went to the Roswell Museum and Planetorium. We went for a laser show, which was really fun. It was electronic music and I recommend if you go to the laser show, get the 3D glasses. It makes it way better. It would have been so fun if they moved the chairs out, which they probably can't. I think they're bolted to the floor, but if they made it so that it was like a dance party, that would have been so fun. But it was like early in the morning. It was like super loud. I like blew my eardrums out again. Like I did bring earplugs. I wasn't expecting it to be that loud. But we then went to the convention center and outside we see this UFO parked. And there's like a tent set up and these this couple like they're being interviewed and we got our picture taken with the ufo i'll post it here but what's really cool and i didn't find this out until after because on monday when the festival was over my husband and i are driving down the street and we see this ufo driving and i took a little clip i'll post it here
so cute watching it actually being driven and seeing that it is drivable. So they drove it three states from Indiana to here. They got pulled over three times by three different police officers in, three di in two different states. So the police officers pulled them over to just make sure that it was uh, up to par and registration was correct and because they wanted their picture taken. So how funny is that the man who built this UFO car said he did it because he thinks everyone should act like an eight year old. And I couldn't agree more with him. Pretty much the whole town gets in on the act. The mall, the Roswell mall, and I, you know, I say it lightly because it's not really a mall. It's a very small mall. They put up little alien statues and they have information about different UFO experiences around the world, which was interesting. There is a small zoo here, which we didn't go. I know in 2023, when I was looking at the stuff, they did something last year. I don't know what they did this year, but there's lots of free things to do. If you go to the convention center, there's a fee. The UFO Research Center and Museum, there's a fee. But Main Street is closed down and the parade is free. The costume contest, they have a pet costume contest. They have a human contest, costume contest. They have free musical entertainment. Two stages, they have the main stage and the cultural stage. So the cultural stage has New Mexican, Mexican and like folk music. And then the main stage had like country and pop and hip hop and stuff. So you can see this little guide. This is, you know, a map of downtown. This is about the Comic Con in Roswell at the convention center during the um, festival. So they had a walk of fame unveiling. I don't know what that was. We didn't go to that. Um, next to the convention center, they had free bouncy houses and cooling misters set up for the kids, which was really cool. Um, they had the historical rocket slide unveiling, which we didn't go to that, but we took a picture and we I'll put a picture here. They had a car show, which I didn't, I mean, we're not into cars. So we wanted to go to the sky watch, but we didn't get to because they switched the nights and we already had what we wanted to see. I'm thinking next year we're just gonna do the free stuff and maybe some of the film festival because now looking at this and seeing what films they were playing, I think that would have been kind of fun. It just depends on what you're interested in. Do you want to watch a film? Do you want to listen to speakers? Do you want to go to like a comic con? At the miniatures museum, um, they had Globots, which they had the local kids come in and do glow in the paint like sculptures. I'll post a picture here. We went and checked that out on Sunday because Sunday we were we had been so busy Friday and Saturday, like back to back stuff. Um, that Sunday we we just went and saw that. Now we went to a reading at Electric Treasures. A woman read from her book about her experiences. That was interesting. They had Robotron Friday, July 5th at 8.30, and then they were in the parade too. So it says at the convention center, it went um, noon to six on Friday, 10 to six on Saturday, and 10 to four on Sunday. Sci-fi collectibles and art, gaming, gaming, merchandise, Star Child Academy, children's crafts, crafters, artists, authors, and books. Their featured artist is Steve Garcia. Renowned animator and illustrator photo ops with working droids, flying saucer car, and more. Enjoy the air-conditioned main hall. It was only $5, or you could get a Pass Plus, which was the three-day admission, and a swag bag for $20, which isn't bad. I never went to uh, Comic-Con in Phoenix because it was just too expensive. So here is a picture in the paper of the UFO car. It is Steve Anderson's flying saucer car will be parked at Dallas to Con outside the Roswell Convention Center. Traveling the human highways was quite a challenge, but friendly law enforcement officers such as the Crawford County Sheriff in Missouri and the Oklahoma State Patrol were helping them along the way, as was reported on their Facebook page. I don't know what their Facebook page is. Maybe just type in Steve Anderson? I don't know. I want to check it out now. <laughs> So Saturday night, we saw the parade. We saw Odd Lab Fire Show, which was excellent. I'll post a clip somewhere in here.
So they had a pet costume contest at 9 a.m. in front of the courthouse. The alien contest on the main stage at 6 p.m. on Saturday. And then at 8 p.m. they had the parade. And we saw Alejandra Fresquez. And she was named the female vocalist of the year by the New Mexico Hip Hop Awards. Now, it's really funny. I forgot to tell the story because, you guys, this is my second time recording the first time. I thought it was awesome and I ran out of storage. At the UFO Research uh, Museum and Research Center, they had RD2B2 from Star Wars or, you know, a robot that looked like that. And I'm like, look, Nikolai, it's RD2, right? That's the name. Anyway, and Nikolai's like, no, I think it's from the Doctor Who. And I was like, no. So anyway, <laughs> we ended up talking to the owner of the robot and he said that he called her a she. The robot was in Star Wars films, but only as an extra and she didn't get a credit or anything. But he's like, she's an out of work robot. Um, so that was funny. I'll post a picture in a little clip. Now, if you guys follow me on my page, I do post little shorts of this stuff. So next year, I think we're going to try to do the convention center, the free stuff, and maybe some of the independent films because they had independent films and like films from other countries. So they had like Dark Dreamer from Germany. It was 15 minutes. The Call of Water, 20 minutes USA. The Field from Russia, which was 25 minutes. Probed, Distant Signals, Echoes of Roswell, Others, The Shaver Mysteries. The Search, which was from Argentina. That was like a full length movie. Um, let's see. A Haunting in Blue Hill, which is a full length movie. Alien Planet. Into the Abyss, which is from Argentina. And then which is from Argentina as well. The Paranormal Journal Presents Fluffs. White House Cafe. That was 47 minutes. They had some fun movies, which we didn't even look at the movies because we were just so busy. And it was nice that we were able to come home and take breaks and walk our dogs. So that was nice. I do wish that they had kind of more diversity of speakers for the ufologists. I attempted to go to the UFO convention in Phoenix. That is the largest one in the country, potentially in the world. However, to get in is so expensive, but they have a plethora of speakers and different topics and it's really interesting and their vendors, they had like energy healers. They had um, Vivian Chavette who was doing energy healing there and selling some of her energy healing. No, she's a hybrid. I will link a video here to one of her YouTube videos. I'll try to find one where she's talking about how she's an alien hybrid. So I went to that just and walked around just the free section because it was so expensive. So, you know, it is nice that the city of Roswell keeps the convention costs. You know, it's there's a lot of free things to do and then things are just like five bucks. So if you guys get a chance around 4th of July, come check it out. It's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this little UFO festival. Thank you. Bye, guys.